Okay. Uh, a quick show of hands. Who, anybody who have used SymPy before? Uh, now, heard of SymPy before? Ah, good, good. Okay. Who am I? I am a SymPy developer. I study mathematics and computing at IIT BHU, and I love open source. What is SymPy? SymPy is an open source Python library for symbolic computation, written completely in Python. Symbolic computation. Study and development of algorithms and software for manipulating mathematical expressions and other mathematical objects. Simply put, this is symbolic, 3.14 and everything, that's numeric. Why, why use SymPy? SymPy is standalone, it's fully featured, it's BSD licensed, that means anybody can use it for free. It embraces Python, and it was designed to be used as a library first, unlike other computer algebra systems like Mathematica. Uh, this is a, a list of the features we have. Basic arithmetic, polynomials, calculus, solving equations, combinatorics, discrete math, matrices, physics, statistics, printing. Okay. Let's begin. Uh, if everybody can open the index notebook, uh, much of the material is hands-on, so uh, if you want, you can follow along. Uh, let's go to the first notebook. So this notebook is the preamble. It's like tells you the basics, the basic building blocks for using SymPy. Uh, we start with the imports. Init underscore printing here just switches on the pretty printing. So this is the math dot square root, the math module that comes with Python. And this is the square root function uh, with SymPy. Uh, if you see the difference, math dot square root 2 gives you a decimal, but SymPy by default give, will give you like square root 2, like exactly what you write on a blackboard. So uh, okay, first little exercise, let's try a cos of minus 1, and we get pi. But what if we do math dot a cos minus 1 again? So I think so. the difference is pretty clear now. Symbols. Symbols form the basic building blocks of all SymPy expressions. These are not just Python variables, but SymPy objects, which can be manipulated and played around with. Say, if we do x plus 1, we get x plus 1. So x is like a mathematical symbol. So another few examples. OK, uh, small exercise. Let's try making a couple of symbols here. Okay, we do symbols, mu, sigma. Another exercise. Let's use exponential SQRT. These are all SymPy functions, which understand symbolic things. So let's let's try forming the Bell function. Uh, int use x, mu, and sigma we just created. You can use the exp function and sqrt function. Hmm? Yes. Uh, so this is what we get. Derivatives. One of the most commonly requested operations in SymPy is the derivative. To take the derivative of the function, we use the diff function, x squared diff. Uh, if, if we don't give an argument, it automatically understands. If there is a single variable in the expression, if there are 
uh, multiple variables, then we have to specify which variable we want to differentiate it with respect to. Uh, diff is also available as a global function. OK, so uh, another small exercise. We made the bell function, right? I want you all to take out the derivative of it with respect to x. So as you see, we get we get a symbolic result here, not a numerical one. And similarly, you could have done uh, diff b comma x, where x means we are differentiating it with respect to x. Now, if you, if you see the bell bell expression carefully, it has more than one variable, right? It has x, mu, sigma. W what if you wanted to differentiate it with respect to sigma? So we could have easily done something like this. And we get uh, we get the differential with respect to sigma. Uh, now, what about second differential, third differential? So this is just like taking the differential of the previous expression. So we can chain the diff things. And uh, what I would like you all to do is find the second derivative of the Bell function. Another, another, another thing which, which could have been done is we could have just given it 2 and it would have, uh, yes, so expressions don't look quite similar, but they are, if we, I think, so if we simplify them and we expand this, and uh, yeah, so sort of same. Uh, SymPy gives you a lot of functions which can play around just like NumPy, SciPy prevents you, provides you strong uh, function implementation. SymPy provides you the same but symbolic counterparts of them. So something like this. Now if you see sine square x plus cos square x, we know it's one, right? But SymPy, SymPy will avoid to do a lot of automatic simplifications on, on its own because x may be a complex number or a real number or so in, in in a lot of cases a user might not want the simplifications so for simplifying the thing we can use a convenience function known as simplify so it gives you one now uh, you have already found out the uh, three third derivative of the bell curve right let's see let's see let's try to simplify this I want you all to simplify the steady weight. Yes. Uh, uh, you, you want the material? Uh, oh, expression for B? OK. So this is B. So now what I want, to do to, want you to do is simplify the third derivative of the Bell function. Again, this is what B looks like. Now, if you see, uh, earlier we had like a lot of terms. So what Simplify has done for us is it has factored out and taken out the common elements. Uh, 
Now, uh, simplify actually is not, is not a mathematically defined term. Like, how do you say A is more simplified than B? It's more of what we want, right? So what simplify does is it has a lot of algorithms implemented and a lot of heuristics which it performs and tries to give you the sort of the most simplified result. If, if you want to do something more tailored, there are more, more convenience level functions for it, like uh, we could have expanded it, or we could have, so it expands the whole thing. And there are a lot of functions like collect, which collects the terms. Another, another, another function is simplify. Simplify is, again, I say not simplify. They are different things. So simplify lets you quickly make strings into simpy expressions. Say you wanted to make r into cos theta, so you would have to make r as a symbol, theta as a symbol, then do r into cos theta. So a, a simpler thing would have been to just to simplify r cos theta here. Okay. Question. Yes. Does simplify always reduce the statement as far as it can? I mean, does it give you a wide multiple time? It doesn't change anymore. Simplify or simplify? Simplify. Simplify? Yeah. Yeah, so simplify uh, is, not, is not a randomized uh, function. So whatever the result it gives, it will give you the same result. It's actually. Uh, the problem is simplify, you, you can't say a s expression A, mathematically speaking, expression A is more simplified or B is more simplified. You, you might need x plus 1 whole squared, or you might need x squared plus 1 plus 2x, right? Yeah. So, no. Yes, so it, it, it actually performs a lot of algorithms in turn. So it, it tries to simplify as much as it can, like uh, x minus x, so it, it will make it zero, right? So something like this. But if you want, if you want uh, like certain simplification things, uh, certain specific things, you have specific functions in SymPy, like for expanding, you have dot expand. If you want to collect terms, factor them out, you have collect function. If you want to simplify trigonometric terms, you have trig simp. So simplify is a kind of a wrapper that wraps around all of it. So simplify can also be slow because it tries to do a lot of things. Yes? If you call expand and then simplify, do you get the same result? Let's see. Or does it mm, OK. Like uh, let's see. Simplify. Oh, so it collects everything, right? This is what you wanted to ask? Actually, simplify will give you different result if you give it different expressions. So x plus 1 whole squared will be sort of different than x squared plus 1 plus 2x for simplify. Yes? Yes, yes. So it, it, it's actually, this is what I wanted to say, it's not, it's not a mathematically defined algorithm. So it's sort of a convenience function, like quickly, if you want to simplify something, you just do simplify. But it's, it's generally not recommended to use uh, directly simplify, rather use more specific functions for the things you want to do. Okay, any more questions? Okay, let's, let's move on to the next notebook now. This notebook here talk, talks about how to solve equations in SymPy. Say, we, and we have results like x plus 1. Now, how to replace x with y or x with 1? And the plotting capability is built into SymPy. So we start with the common implot, uh, all the import statements. Now, the function for solving equations is solve set. Solve set is actually new. Uh, in SymPy 1.0, older we had solve, which is still not deprecated because some of the functionality has not been ported to solve set. But 
what solve set does is it solves and gives you the result as a set. Now if you see x squared minus 4, it doesn't look like an equation, right? But what, what solve set will do is it will, it will assume every time the equation is equal to 0. And I will talk about more that why we don't do something like this. Uh, what do you think the output of this will be? Anyone? Hmm? Let's see. And why would that be? It's more of a Pythonic question. So x squared minus 4. equal equal zero it says false because what what it's trying to do is it's trying to compare the python classes the objects so x squared minus four is essentially different from zero it's it's not checking for mathematical equality that's the difference here so uh okay Infinite solve set also supports infinite solutions. So if you want to solve sine x equals 0, it will give you a nice result. <laughs> Not that nice, but OK. So actually, whenever we use solve set, it will use complex domain as default. So here's what where the domain argument comes in. If, if, if we solve e power x minus 1, we get 2n iota pi and belonging to the complex plane. What, what if we wanted the solution in the real uh, plane, right? So we could have done domain equal s dot rails. Now I've not talked about s. s is actually a convenience function. It, uh, there are a lot of singletons present in SymPy. Say something like s1. It's, it's actually, if you see the type of it, it's, it's, not, it's not an integer. It's, Simpy core dot numbers dot one. It it allows us to do the symbolic things which we have been doing. It knows how to play around with x and x squared or e power x. So generally, when making Simpy expressions, we will convert the numbers to something of this form. So we could have done something like this, divided by two. So it knows rather than giving 0.5 or something like that, it will give you one by two which is another SymPy object. Now, solving an equation is, is, is not an easy problem. Like, it's not easy, and generally, some equations cannot even be solved. We don't know how to solve them. So what to do in that case? So in that case, just for convenience, solve set will give you a condition set. So it says x such that x belongs to r and whatever the equation was. So this is a condition set which gives you a nice form of the solution if it's not able to find the solution. And if it's able to find a solution, it will, it will give you that. And then uh, for the other equation, it can give you a union. So x minus 1 into e power x plus cos x plus 1. Now, one will be a solution of this equation. It, it knows that. But it does not know how to solve e power x plus cos x plus 1, so it returns a condition set instead, rather than giving a big error. Now, since we are talking about SymPy, we are interested in symbolic results, right? We don't want minus 2 and 2 every time. Uh, let's talk about a square or a rectangle. Area is equal to height into width. So we first make the symbols height, width, and area. And then see, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to solve the height in terms of area and width. So area minus height into width. Note again, it, it, it assumes that this is equivalent to 0. And then the second argument, height, says we wanted to solve it with respect to height. So we get the solution area by width. Now note, area and width are same by symbols here. Uh, uh, this is, again, tells you why 
not to do area equal equal height into width and how is it different than what we have been doing? Let's try an exercise. Now for a sphere, note that the volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. And what we would like to do is, we would like to compute the radius of a sphere given the volume. And some of the exercises, uh, we will be using this magic function. Exercise, if we do exercise, exercise underscore volume. So we get the exercise. Instead of exercise, if you just do the load, you will get the solution. So I would like you all to try this out. We have to find the radius of a sphere in terms of its volume. Solve set assumes that the equation is equal to 0. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's let's try to solve this. So we first start with creating symbols R and V, and then we need to find the radius in terms of its volume, right? And then you say, I want the result uh, now you probably get get a lot of solutions here, right? This is because simpy doesn't doesn't impose assumptions on its own. It assumes everything is in complex plane, right? So instead. If we could have done something like this and said that the radius and volume are positive, this is what positive equal true means. We are applying an assumption here. And then we say we want to solve it in the real domain, uh, we get a single solution. So this is much of a domain related problem, like which domain are we working in? What, what type of symbols we have, are they negative, are they positive, we can, we can give this to SymPy using positive equal true or say there's another argument as well, non-negative equal true or negative equal true. Now let's, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, for some reason, I'm using Python 2. <laughs> See, 4 by 3 gives you 1 here, right? Or if, if you're using Python 3, it gives you like 1.33 or something. But since we are doing symbolic mathematics, we require 4 by 3. So 4 and 3 are both Python objects, so this is what they do. So S will actually convert this 4 into a SymPy object. And when we do this, we get something like this. And if, if you see my solution here, what I did was I made 4 pi r cube first. So this is now a SymPy object. And divided by 3, it knows we have to do symbolics here. So what we have to do is we have to make. 
Ah, oh, yes, that should, that should work as well. Yes, because then it will invert, yes. Yes. So SymPy objects, when they will interact with other objects, they will make them into SymPy objects. So S technically is the singleton registry. Singletons are the objects which are made just once. Since one or numbers like these are used a lot, we, we have made one and four and these kind of stuff. So uh, four will be like four into S dot one, something like this. So uh, these are the objects that are made just once. So S, S just does it for you. Let's, let's talk about substitution. So we have an expression, say, x squared, and uh, say you don't like x anymore. You, you need a y instead, right? So you, you could have used a subs function here, which, which takes in a dictionary, which says replace x with y, and y is another simpy symbol. So we get y squared. Or we could have also done something like this. So it will mean sine, sine squared x, or we can do something like this. It says replace x with minus 1. Another small exercise. Replace x squared plus 2x plus 1. Replace x with sine x. Uh huh. So, did you did you run the init underscore printing thing? So. Calling the print function. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Oh, actually, this is this is not uh, Jupyter's uh, uh, notebooks feature. What is happening is, okay, his question was, uh, he's not able to see the pretty printing here like we are able to see. That's because this, this comes from here. Init underscore printing takes in all, all kinds of arguments. And we could say pretty print true or use Unicode or use LaTeX uh, uh, instead. So we can, we can change and change the printing we want and also does it by default, say you don't have the necessary software for printing in that form, so it, it, will, it will revert back to something you have, or say just keep it normal. Okay, so x squared plus 2x, plus one, and then substitute x with sine x. See, uh, what I've done is a little different than before. We were passing a dictionary, right? So subs also take inputs like this. If you want to just switch one thing with another, or you could have passed a dictionary as well. Now you can mix these two. You can solve the equation symbolically and then substitute with the things you want. As an example, we solved the height in terms of area and width, right? And let's, let's define the parameter, which is 2 into height plus width. And what we want is, we want the parameter, we want to put the solution of height in parameter, that is, we want the parameter in terms of area and width. So we could do parameter.subs height with the solution. Solution in this case is the height in terms of area and width. So we get something like this. If you see, SymPy is not simplifying this. If you wanted to, you could use the simplify function or use the necessary function with what you want to do with this expression.
Okay. So what now we want to do is we want the surface area in terms of volume. So we have we know the volume is four pi by three r cube, right? And then we use solve set to get the expression of radius in terms of volume. So the exercise for you is get the surface area in terms of volume. Any questions? So we see the solution of this is we just use subs to replace radius with the term we got r underscore v, which is radius in terms of volume. And when we when we run this cell, we get the surface area in terms of volume. Now we have got our expression. And what we want to do is we want to see how it changes, right? So we need a plot. SymPy also provides plotting capabilities. By default, it links to the matplotlib backend. So we could do something like plot x squared, change variate x from minus 100 to 100, and it's able to plot the symbolic results. Another small exercise. Let's try plotting the expression we got before this. That is the surface area in terms of volume. So this is the expression right here. If you get stuck and want to see the solution, you can use load. And if you want to reset and see the exercise, you can use the exercise magic. <laughs> Which equation? Uh, Which SymPy version are you using? Uh, your works. Uh, actually, solve set is uh, sort of a new function which got released with SymPy 1.0. So if you're if you're using an uh, older version, you might get into a little bit of trouble. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. That might that might be the problem. See if you if you if you just replace a real with positive and if you get the yeah oh, okay so this is actually uh, simpy 1.1 so o older versions may give you a different result uh, a lot uh, from simpy import underscore underscore version underscore underscore should give you the version yes. Uh, the error? What was the error? Are we? Yes. So uh, maybe for the older versions, it's not working as expected. If you if you just replace uh, real equal true with positive equal true in 37. Okay. Let's see. So 
the answer I have here, you could have easily done the subs, but I have instead typed out the expression as is and have used a lot of s. <laughs> so once you plot it, SimPy does it for you. And if you see, I have not given the second argument. I have not told it to variate over v from minus 100 to 100. If you don't do that, by default, it does it from minus 10 to 10. But, but this will work only if you have a single symbol in your expression. If you have, like, say, v, x, and a y, then SimPy doesn't know you want to variate what. In that case, the second argument is compulsory. Now, SimPy tries to be a very low dependency project. Uh, not a lot of dependencies, standalone. So some of the interest, uh, interesting features have also come along, like text plot. So it's sort of like plots it uh, for a terminal, I guess. Uh, fun to play with, though. <laughs> so the exercise next is play with text plot and enjoy. Like, do this at your home. OK, let's move on to the third notebook. This is more of a practice notebook, where we'll be practicing differentiation, subs, and solve set, which we have learned in the previous two notebooks. OK, so we start with the standard imports. We make certain symbols, and then we also load the exercise magic. And the first exercise for you is evaluate function. EXPR is a list of expressions, and x is the variable, and x0 is the point. So what you want to do is you want to differentiate all of the expressions with respect to x and get the value at x0. You can use the load magic if, in case you get stuck and want to see the solution. Yes. In the last exercise, I tried to simplify it after the subs. In the last exercise, uh, this one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you want? Uh, like, I don't think so. Uh, Oh, what are you trying to do? What, what are you trying to like? Is there a certain simplification you have in mind? I just wanted to work. Like, uh, yeah, so simplify, simplify will try to simplify things. But if it can't, it will just give you the expression as it is. Uh, okay. Okay, so you have it. This looks correct. If I reload the... Uh, yes, I think so. This variable is something else because input must be set so the tables of set. Did it, did it change something? Or, oh, okay. What you need is something like this. It's actually a set. You need a solution. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, so that's what you. Oh, yes. Let's, let's try to solve this. So we have a list of expressions which we want to differentiate. So 
So we loop over the expressions and then we differentiate it with respect to x and then we substitute x with uh, x naught. So once we run this, uh, let's see. Any questions? Any problems? Good. Yes. Uh, Sorry, can, can you be a little louder? <laughs> yes. When you say the power of A is equal to the square root of A of A, if I then want you to go and reverse that step and say, I want B to be the power of A of A, is there a better way than having to create a new symbol for the power of A to be the same, manually say, equal to the rearranging? Because uh -huh. you have lost the information that your symbol is equal to half. Like it isn't the symbol that I have. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> so if, if I just wanted to, I've got you know, RB equals 1. Uh -huh. I want to rearrange that back to B. How do, I, how do I do that? Because R is no longer in the, in the equation, and R is not Yeah, okay. So R is a symbol, right? Now you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to see the difference here. R underscore V is actually a Python variable, which has the result this stored into it. So V is a symbol right here. R underscore V is a Python variable, right? So say if you wanted to go back and get it into terms of R, you could have done, let's substitute the V symbol we have here with something, say, 4 into pi into R into square. And, and we could have done it by 3. OK? So you can easily replace V again with the symbol r or say 4 by 3 pi r cube or 4 pi r square, whatever the need be. Uh, I will talk about more about this in, uh, in my next notebook where we have to be like a little bit careful about certain things, especially Python variables and SymPy symbols. They are different things. So if I, if I say this, So this is again, now, crazy is a Python, Python uh, variable, but unrelated is a SymPy symbol, which is saved into the Python variable. So what we want is we want to generally keep the same name, but at the end of the day, crazy is a Python variable that saves a SymPy symbol. So when we do x equals symbols x, X is actually a Python variable that is having symbol X saved in it. So if you think it like that, you can avoid a lot of confusions. Okay, let's move on to the next exercise. This is based on the solve set. Here we will try to take out the general solution for a quadratic equation. If you don't remember, uh, a quadratic equation is of the form a x squared plus bx plus c. So we want a general solution for this kind of an equation. And similarly, if you complete this, try solving it for a cubic equation. Uh, for cubic, the result can be a bit longer.
Yes. Mm -hmm. uh-huh yes so you you want to solve a system of equations right yes so this is generally uh, for that uh, you should you should look into the solve function i don't think so solve set supports a system of equations as of yet this is the uh, solve set is the new function which we are wanting everybody to move towards but if you want to solve say a system of equation you can use solve so this is an older one it takes it has sort of a similar syntax you give it a list of equations and then you say you want to solve it with x and it will solve the system for you there is another function uh, i think so yes so i think so this lin solve solve system of n linear equations with m variables yes now lin solve is new yes yes it's actually part of a gsoc project which happened last year <clears throat> okay let's try to solve this So once we plug in the quadratic equation again this is assumed equal to 0 and we solve it with respect to x we get we get the solution of this equation so this is a sort of an easy case simpy can do more compl complicated stuff like solving it for a quad a cubic <laughs> equation this might take a little bit of time but here we have it so this this example is actually a motivation of why a person might need to use simpy this because sometimes your equations may be like one page or two pages long and you and you don't you don't want to do it by hand right and you want to do it in python so you come to simpy and simpy does it for you without ever forgetting about a term or a symbol or writing 4 as a 3 or 3 as a 4 and wasting a lot of time <laughs> okay any more questions let's move on to the yes yeah uh if i get you correctly he says uh, you you are saying like do it without simpy yes so uh, there is there is uh, we have code generation modules so one function i'm particularly going to talk about is lambdify so what what it does is it it will take this expression and then convert it to python code using the math module or you can use the numpy backend as well and that you can use uh, actually we we are going to talk about it in a short while mm -hmm. yes uh yeah can you be a little louder please translate that to a latex oh uh we i think so we have a latex function so you just plug it in and you get the latex result let's see (laughs) 
Yeah, so like, I don't have my LaTeX configured right now, I'm sorry. I do all of my work on the cloud these days. So that's bad. <laughs> uh, this notebook actually talks about the confusions you people have been having. Python variable, Python symbol, it's equal equal zero gives false, what is that? And how to come over that? So we start with the standard import. And A equal stuff is a simple Python variable, right? The symbols function creates a sympy variable x, which is assigned to Python variable x. Note again, x is a Python variable which has a symbol that is named x. So this, this is the example I just gave. If you do crazy equal size symbols unrelated y or a more different example, you do this. So you get x, y is saved in x, but I am like I will strictly recommend not to do this if you, if you want to solve your problems. Uh, this gets very hard. Believe me, I've tried it. <laughs> Uh, you want to work with the derivatives, uh, like? Yes. Yeah, so matrices actually implement these functions. Yeah. So there, there are another, another, another classes like matrix symbols, oh. and and you just, you just, you you can actually define symbolic matrices, and. There are also indexed symbols, so that you say like I want x zero to x nine. You just you just create me for that. So you can you can use that uh, for things like this. Another key feature of SymPy is immutability. Say we have an expression x, x plus y plus one, and then we replace x equal three. Uh, since I told the expressions are immutable, you can expect A to be the same. So changing X doesn't change A. Now substitute X with 3 in A. I'd like you all to try this out. So if you try to do, I think, so like something like this, you get this, and this is very weird. Why, why might this be happening? Yes, so exactly. X is now 3. So we actually want to replace the symbol X, and this is where you have to be careful. SymPy expressions are immutable. So we do x equals symbols x. And then when we do it, we get y plus 4. SymPy expressions, like unlike NumPy and other libraries you might have used, SymPy expressions are all immutable. They never change in place. So whenever you do sub, simplify, always a new expression will be returned. Equal sign. Okay, we have A as x plus 1 whole squared and B as something like this, x squared plus 2x plus 1. We, just looking at it, we know these are equal, right? But, but when we do A equal equal B, we get false. This is because Python will, will, see, will actually compare it as an object. It will actually see if, if the expressions are same or not. But what we are looking right here uh, for is for mathematical equality, not structural equality. So Python will look for structural equality. We want the mathematical equality instead. So another way to do this will be if we can just simplify A minus B. And if we get a 0, we can safely assume 
that these two things are same. So we get a zero here. Yes. Yes. Uh, not that I know of, like, uh, we have been trying to use the proper Python syntax a person is used to, so that you can write library code seamlessly. So if you do something like x this, this is a power method. But, but if you see traditional algebra systems, they will do power something like this, right? So what I've been trying to do is, we have been trying to keep the Python code as it is, so that a person who knows Python can just use it as a library. Though I'm not really sure that, uh, yeah, but yes? No, this is an ex actually an XOR. XOR? Okay, let's, let's, let's move forward. Now, we have been doing that x squared minus 4 is assumed to be 0. Sometimes it's good to have it represented as an equation. Uh, makes more sense that way. So, equality of x squared comma y gives you x squared equal y, and the way to do is use the eq function. It has the LHS, the RHS, and solve set accepts this, so this works out of the box. So if you have confusion, and uh, like x squared minus 4, what it is equal to, you can just use the eq method, which actually represents inequality. Another thing uh, which we need to keep, be careful about is this. Now, a cos 1 by 2 shouldn't be pi by 2, right? I think so, it should be pi by 3. And this is because half in Python 2 will be like 0, or in Python 3 it will be 0 0.5, but we, what, what, we, what we want to give a cos is half, 1 by 2. So for that, we are looking at a new function that's rational. So rational 1 comma 2 will actually represent this as 1 by 2, or the other way we saw was we can just do s of 1 divided by 2. That, that works the same way, yes. So this is more explicit. If somebody wants to make a fraction symbolically, you can just call rational 1 by 2, and it just makes it. So one, once we do a cos rational 1 by 2, this now knows how to interpret 1 by 2 and give you the right answer. Because all of the SymPy functions are made to work symbolically. We are not actually working for numeric expressions. So uh, this will also work with the fraction uh, module 
that's provided with uh, Python. Uh, rational is actually a SymPy class, so I, I will recommend using rational because SymPy objects play very well with SymPy objects, as simple as that. And an another thing to be careful of if you use another computer algebra systems, they generally have this symbol for uh, powers, but since we are embracing Python, star star is power and not this. So this will actually uh, represent, in this case, an auto ring, so yes. Now, simplify is actually smart enough. So it knows that you are coming from, say, you, you have some mathematical code which you directly want to get converted into SymPy, say you have x. So uh, simplify will do that for you. And if you don't want it to do this kind of simplifications on its own, you can always pass convert underscore xor as false. So it will, it will not do that. And now, uh, two exercises for you all. We have a certain expression. And the doc string tells what expression we are expecting. But the answer we are getting uh, is somewhat different. So what I would like you all to do is fix this and get the right expression. So this gives an error as well. OK, let's try to work out through the first exercise here. So first, we will try to uh, correct the power term. And then when we see we still get 0.5, this is because of the Python division gotcha I was talking about. So we, we need it actually as a SymPy object. So half first evaluates how Python evaluates it. And then it gets added up with the SymPy objects. So what we want is something like this. Or to be more explicit, something like this. So now what we get is what we were expecting. Yes. 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 Yeah. So another disclaimer in all my notebooks I've been doing from Simpa Import Star, never do that. It's just for teaching purposes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. So, probably you, you want to take it 
as an argument here or something like this. But I did this on purpose for just to make it easier and not to think about these things and just 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 get the answer right. So and also also don't do from simpy import star. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's sort of another gotcha, yeah. Let's try to fix the second one now. So first we do, we make it correct. We replace the caret symbol with star star. And then the another one with star star. And now let's see what happens. So we get something like this which again doesn't look right, again because of how Python evaluates its integers when we divide them. So we do something like this and we get the half correct and then similar for the other things. And note, if we do S of 3 by 2, it will still give you 1.5 because 3 by 2 gets evaluated first. So what I'm talking about is this. So 3 by 2 gets evaluated first, and then you convert it to into a SymPy object, which is just 1.5. So we don't want that. We want 3 by 2. So we first convert 3 into a SymPy object, and then SymPy knows how to divide it with a 2 and uh, keep it symbolic. Okay, let's move on to the next one, integrals. So just like differentiation, uh, it's, it's, it's very easy to calculate integrals in SymPy as well. So the first example will be if we want to do an indefinite integral of say x squared. So it takes the expression as the first argument and the variable with which we are trying to, uh, with respect to which we are integrating as the second argument. And if we don't give it the limits, it assumes it's indefinite and gives you the indefinite result. Again, it, it doesn't add, we don't add the constant from our side. This is for the user to take care of. Uh, it's, it's pretty much easy to add a constant if you want to, say, like just a one or something. Just add a one or add a new symbol y. Uh, yes, y. The definite integral is also something similar. Now we give the limits. We say integrate x squared with respect to x from 0 to 3. Now since we are talking about SymPy and symbolics, we might talk about integrals which have symbolic limits, right? So SymPy can handle this and come on. Don't use bleeding edge versions every time. It gives you trouble. <laughs> integrate x power n uh, and integrate x from y to z and we get something like this. Since these are symbols and it's not I think so we might be able to do this as well. Now we might have to plug in some values or have some more assumptions on symbols before we can do this. Another exercise. So the mean value of a function, say, is defined as, in the interval a to b, as integrate fx ds from a to b and divided by b minus a. So what I want you people to do is uh, implement this average underscore value function, which takes in an expression a symbol x and the limit a to b and we want the average value in that interval. So average value again is 1 upon b minus a into integral of fx dx from a to b.
Any questions so far? Okay, let's try to solve this. What we want to do is, we want to first integrate the expression. With respect to x, from a to b, and then we want to divide it by b minus a, so we get the average value. And when we run it, see the results here now another caution symbolic integration is not is not very easy to do there are a lot of algorithms some of them are in SymPy some of them are still not implemented PRs welcome and symbolic limits then again has some limits and it's not it's not easy to calculate any integral you might want so there are some integrals which might be not solvable and some integrals which we don't have algorithm for yet. Okay. Let's talk about matrices. So we'll start with the small SymPy matrix. Matrix is defined with the matrix method that takes in a list of lists where each entry in the list of list, each list is a row. So you get something like this. Then again, if you see, this matrix actually has all the symbolic, symbolic ele uh, elements in it. So R cos theta, if you, if you see, it's the rotation matrix. So there are some standard methods, like if you want to find the determinant of this matrix, or do an inverse, or find the singular values for it. Another small exercise. Let's try to find the inverse of the matrix 1x, y1. You make the matrix with the matrix method, and then you call the appropriate functions on it. Each element in the list of list is a row. So this here define okay. Oops. So this here defines the matrix we are talking about, and what we want to do next is find the inverse for it. And that's the answer. Standard SymPy operators also work on matrices. Say if you want to multiply it with two or then again say theta, uh, so we can do that. We can also square the matrix, we can make vectors, and then multiply these as well. It's just uh, all the operators work on matrices, yes. Now let's 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 verify a result which we all know. We know we found the inverse of this matrix, right? So what what I want you all to do is check if m into m dot inverse is actually the identity matrix. If actually SymPy is doing the correct thing here. So just a quick exercise. We do this, we get something like this, which is very strange. 
but then again this is because simpy will not to will not try to do all the simplification on its own and it's actually left on the user for the decide of uh, for the user to decide if he wants to simplify the result more or not so you can easily call simplify over it and it should it should give you the identity matrix let's let's try finding the say the eigen vectors or eigen values of m so we can do eigen values that gives you or we can do eigen vectors finding the eigen vectors oh, sorry Uh, matrices also support numpy type indexing so something like 00, zero works or this which means give me all the rows in the first column or the first row and all the columns we can also change the elements in the matrix somewhat just like you would do in a numpy array uh and then we can just find say the determinant or singular values and everything works out of the box there are some other matrix constructors as well uh i stands for the entry matrix so i3 will give you a 3 cross 3 entry matrix or you could want a diagonal matrix so 1 2 3 we can also have ones or zeros uh, another another nice thing to know is we can actually put matrices as arguments so this here takes in a 2 cross 2 identity matrix and one so it will give you something like this sort of another quick exercise let's let's try and I have my answer right there. Sorry. <laughs> so this actually, we are trying to make a three cross three matrix with diagonal elements as four. So we can do this, or another solution could have been simply this. So that gives you somewhat same result. Say you want a matrix somewhat like this. What you can do is, uh, we are running short on time, so let's do this. So we can do diagonal, and then we can do ones, and then we can say one, and we get the matrix we are looking for. Now this is uh, another matrix. If you see. It has all the ones in the upper side and all the zeros in the lower side. So what we want is, we want actually a diagonal matrix that has a three cross three negated ones matrix and then has a zeros matrix on the diagonal. So you get something like this. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Numeric uh, evaluation. Now, SymPy can do symbolics, but sometimes you want the numeric result of your equation, the final equation you got after solving your system. You want the answers for it for certain values of x or say y. So for that, we can use the subs method, which you have seen before. An another method is evalf which will actually evaluate it as a float. So, something like this. If you see this, this was pi, and then we said evaluate this. And evaluate takes the first argument as the precision. We can easily give it 100, and we will get the result of pi to 100 digits. Or, I think so, it should work for 1,000 as well. Now, let's, let's skip this exercise. This is more on subs. We have done a lot of work on subs. Uh, integrate and you just sub it and you get the answer. 
Okay, the next, the next exercise I want you people to do is, is find, determine the first place where 999999 appears, that is six times nines in pi. So, uh, hence for that, you, if you have a decimal, you can split it using this. The two here says, we just want two max splits, and then you can find three, four, five, which will give you the index starting from zero. So you might want to add one here to get the correct place. And if it's unable to find, it gives a minus one. So what I want you people to do is, try this out. Find 999999 in an expression. So it takes in pi and then you do evaluate and then you try to find where it is. They just actually, this is done uh, by another low level library we use, MP Math. So it actually has the algorithm for calculating pi for a lot more digits. So EvalF actually calls MP Math's function and gives you fast float evaluation for symbolic expressions. Since we are short on time, let's see the solution of this. We take in the expression, we evaluate, we evaluate the floating, uh, ex uh, we evaluate as a float till precision limit, and then we split it on a decimal, take the second value, and then we find 999, and then we add a one, and if it's a zero, we return false. So if we see it for pi, we get the 762nd place is where 6 times 9 appears. And we don't get 6 times 9 in capital E. Another, another very interesting function which I want to talk about is lambda phi. So lambda phi sort of uh, is part of the code gen module of SymPy. So what it will do is it, it will convert SymPy expressions into, say, Python functions or NumPy functions, so it will actually use Python implementations from the math module or from the NumPy module to actually give you high performance code. And, but what you do is you first make your symbolic expression, you have your symbolic equation, and then you can, using lambda phi, just, just simply convert it into a more quicker backend like NumPy, or you can do it for C or Fortran code. I think so from SymPy 1.0, you can also do it for TensorFlow, which is, I don't know why you will use that, but I don't know the uh, exact, yes, use case for that, yes. Uh, maybe, I said that because I don't know how to use TensorFlow, so. <laughs> I'm not a machine learner, so. Uh, lambda phi takes an expression and then the output function and then actually converts it into a, say, Python backend or a NumPy backend, which we can explicitly define. And we get this. Now you would say you can also do this with, uh, you can also do the substitution or something like this with subs and evalf. What I didn't talk about is subs and evalf gets, are a lot slower than this. So once you have to do it for a lot of points, a good thing is to try lambda phi. Say we have a general function and then we want to map it to say, make it as a numpy function for numerical evalu uh, evaluation and then we can just simply plot this. So this actually under the hood is converting into actual numpy code. So that gives you a performance boost. Okay, I still have five minutes. Any more questions? Okay, let's. Uh, 
I am not sure about that. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. I don't think so. That will be very easy to do, though. Because we have gone to numeric thing, and then we want, again, the symbolic results. Say, if, if you have 3.14, it is not easy to determine it's pi. So you don't know it's actually not exactly pi, right? Uh, might be, I'm not sure uh, if something can be done in this. Uh, let's quickly look through series expansion. It's, 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 it's very easy to expand a function as series expansion. I'm oh, sorry. And what this says is I want the series expansion of sine x with respect to x about 0 0.0 till order 6. So it's also available as a global function. Let's skip the exercise. Now, there is another way of uh, finding the series expansion. If you look at the series function, what it is doing is it's computing terms till order n, which, which a user specifies. Say now you, you want an equation, say, till order 9 or order 10. You again have to recompute it. So another way around that is actually FPS, which stands for formal power series. So the algorithm, what it does is, and how it's different from series is, it's actually calculating the formula for the coefficients. So once you have done the calculation, it, it's very easy to get, say, I want to truncate it till order 10, or say I want the 51st term of the series, and you get it. And you don't have to recompute anything. So this was actually my GSOC project, which released it from SymPy 1.0, and it's not available uh, in older versions. Uh, we also have uh, support for four-year series, so like uh, sawtooth underscore series. So we can easily plot it and say x by pi, x from minus pi to pi. So that's it. Any more questions? Yes. Yes, yes. So actually, it's a, it's a whole suite of functions. We have u funky phi, lambda phi, and there are some other functions also which actually spit out the exact proper C code, including the header files which a person might use. So if you are interested in the code gen stuff, uh, you can see the readme of my repo. Uh, actually, this year, a very good tutorial on code generation was delivered at SciPy. So if you go to that link, uh, in the first notebook itself, you should get introduced to all the code generation facilities we have. And a, lo and a lot of work is going on this. I think so we have a couple of GSOC projects this year working on code gen. Oh, yes. So this, this, this uh, is especially useful because you can also, say, convert it to JavaScript code. And once you, once you convert to JavaScript code, the symbolic stuff, you can actually plot it, say, using d3.js. So if you, if you go to that repo, it actually has an example where they plot the Batman equations uh, you, uh, using SymPy and then converting it to JavaScript code and then using a JavaScript library for that. Okay, that's it, thank you.